Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at induction in organic chemistry and where induction is important. And you've got a definition of induction there, the electron withdrawing or donating effect of an atom or a group, which then can cause polarisation of a sigma bond and a permanent dipole to be formed in a molecule. We're going to have a look at a few examples which will hopefully make this definition a little bit clearer. First one that we'll look at is acidity. Uh, acidity within a weak acid such as a carboxylic acid and we can see here that this hydrogen is acidic and can potentially be lost to form this carboxylate iron um, if you want to know why this hydrogen this particular hydrogen is acidic then you'd need to look at the video on resonance in organic chemistry but for now we've got to think we've got a negative negatively charged carboxylate group there and the degree of dissociation is given by this pKa value here. And the pKa there for ethanoic acid is 4.76. And we can say then that the lower the pKa, then the more acidic your molecule is. That is, the more the equilibrium is going to lie to the right-hand side. Now, what we're going to look at is the effect of certain groups on the acidity hour of this carboxylic acid. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a chlorine atom in place of, in place of a hydrogen atom. And chlorine is an electron withdrawing group. So I'm just going to call that an EWG, an electron withdrawing group. That's withdrawing and pulling electron density towards itself relative to hydrogen. And it pulls electron density from the, not just this particular bond, but also from this bond, this bond, and this bond as well. So let's just add my chlorine here. So remember then, chlorine is pulling electron density from the molecule again it can pull it from all these bonds and this one as well now what it can do then is it can pull electron density away from this negatively charged carboxylate group so it can pull electron density away and it means that the negative charge here is spread out even further now over towards this chlorine and again the more the charge can be spread the more stable the molecule is the more stable the molecule is okay the happier it is we can think of so the more stable it is the more likely it is to form so if we can add a chlorine group which is electron withdrawing pulls electron density away from this negative charge makes the negative charge spread over a, a larger volume this is more likely to form and therefore the equilibrium is going to go to the right hand side so we've got their chloro we call this chloro then ethanoic acid And chloroethanoic acid has a pKa of 2.86. So the pKa is lower, so therefore the more acidic it is. The more acidic it is, the more it's going to lose its hydrogen ion. If we add another chlorine group, and hopefully you can see what's going to happen here, then we have another, adding a chlorine atom, we add another electron withdrawing group so that's pulling electron density towards itself as well which again pulling electron density away from this negatively charged carboxylate group spreading the charge over a bigger volume leading it to be more stable and more likely to exist so the more the equilibrium is going to shift to the right again so here we've got di ethanoic acid and that has a pk of 1.35 and we can do the same thing again we can get rid of this hydrogen put a chlorine atom in its place and again the electron withdrawing nature of that chlorine is going to make this even more acidic so we've got now tri three chlorines trichloro ethanoic acid 
and that has a peak here now of 0.66. So we can see that each time that we add a chlorine, we're adding another electron withdrawing group, and it's helping this negatively charged carboxylate spread that negative charge over a bigger volume. The more charge can be spread, the more stable it is. The more stable it is, the more likely it is to form. So let's have another look at um, how induction is important and in, in, uh, in certain groups can affect, uh, in this case, the major minor products of a reaction. So you can look at the reaction of propene with HBr. And the first step in this mechanism is where the pair of electrons in this pi bond attack this electrophilic center this hydrogen which has got a del posit delta positive and then we break the hydrogen bromine bond the thing is the hydrogen here that i've highlighted in yellow could add to carbon a or it could add to carbon b and that would give us then two different products so let's see what we would get So if the hydrogen adds to carbon A, what we're going to get in the following is we've got my CH3. And we can see there that's the hydrogen that we've added. And these are obviously just hydrogens. So label that as hydrogen A, hydrogen B. So we can see that with the hydrogen initially adds, adds, adds carbon A, this hydrogen, we get this compound here. And this obviously then your bromine, do apologise, the bromine then will add to carbon B. So this would then give you, if we number it, we've got numbers 1, 2, 3. This would give us 1 bromo propane. If hydrogen adds to carbon B, then these, in effect, are going to swap around. So the bromine would now go there. The hydrogen now adds to carbon B. And this here would now give us two bromo propane so hopefully you can see that okay car the bromine is on carbon two now the question is is why do we get two different products and, and which of those products is going to be formed the greatest amount and this again can be explained by looking at the uh, inductive effect and induction so we could get potentially then two different intermediates and again this is where we need to know the mechanism this reaction. So we could, in effect, get two different products. I'm just going to lower this one down a bit. The first is this, this is one particular intermediate. The other intermediate would look like this. So I'll highlight where my high initial hydrogen added. So it's maybe say here or here. So what we've got now is two carbocation intermediates and they are different and they've got different stabilities. And that's due to the fact that alkyl groups that I'm going to circle now, alkyl groups such as these are electron releasing or electron donating groups. Okay, and we can see here that in this particular carbocation, We've got two, I've circled them in green, two electron donating groups. In this one here, we've only got 
one electron donating group. Again, this is always relative to hydrogen. So it's electron donating relative to hydrogen. We actually call this thing here a secondary carbocation. And this one here we would call a primary carbocation. And this carbocation would lead to the formation then of two bromopropane. And this particular, this primary carbocation would lead to the formation of one bromopropane. Now, because the secondary carbocation then is more stable, it's more stable because it's got two electron releasing groups and them electron releasing groups can help stabilize this positive charge i'm pushing electron density in towards this calm with a plus charge making that plus charge more stable this primary carbocation has only got one electron donating group to stabilize this positive charge so the secondary carbocation will be more stable that would mean then that the two bromopropane will be formed in a greater amount. So they're not formed equally. We would call this then the major product. And this we would call the minor product. So you will still, still get some one bromopropane, but not nearly as much as the two bromopropane. And that's all again to do with the inductive effect of these electron donating or electron releasing groups and what they're doing is they're stabilizing this positive charge which formed in, in this intermediate i'm just going to go through one last example some unexpected products again which we can look at um, in terms of the inductive effect here we've got something called a friedelkraft alkylation and what happens then in this particular reaction is the aluminium chloride here basically generates a CH3 plus. So it's going to pull this chlorine off and that's going to form our electrophile, which is a CH3 plus ion. And if we have a look at the mechanism, again, it's it's one that you should be, should be able to do. So we've got a CH3 plus. And that's going to give rise to um, an intermediate structure. So you should be aware of how to do this. Oops. And then this would give us our product which I'm just going to put an arrow to there. So that would give us my methyl benzene. Now, another reaction here is where we've got but uh, one chlorobutane. And you may expect this as my product, okay? However, you actually find that that is very much the minor product and actually, the major product is going to be this compound here, which we call sec butyl benzene. Well, this would be just butyl benzene. This would be something called sec butyl benzene. And why is that? Well, because when we form this carbocation, so we form this carbocation. So remember, this aluminium chloride is pulling off the chlorine a chloride ion specifically. And what we're going to get then is this particular carbocation here with a plus charge. What actually happens is, is this is a primary carbocation and they are unstable. And that is because if we were to draw this out in full, it's only got one electron donating group attached, and it's this one here. 
just this one electron donating group. However, this carbocation can rearrange itself. So what we actually get is the following. So this is a primary carbocation. That carbocation, again, is less stable than a secondary carbocation. So this carbocation can basically, we get this thing called a, a hydride shift. And what happens is, is that this, and we can do this mechanistically, this, in effect, forms a bond. The pair of electrons in that CH bond is now going to form a new so the pair of electrons here are going to form a new CH bond. So this hydrogen here and its pair of electrons are going to shift there. And that's going to give us then the following. So if I just copy this, you should be able to see what we're going to get. So the result of that curly arrow is, is that this now bond has been broken. The pair of electrons and the hydrogen have both gone to that carbon one. And we get now a positive charge in here. Now we have, if you see, we've now got one, two electron withdrawing groups. So we've got a, this here is a secondary carbocation. And therefore is more stable. And that means that when... Um, the ALCL3 pulls the hydrogen off to form this primary carbocation. It basically then undergoes a rearrangement to the secondary carbocation. And this is more likely to exist because it's more stable. And then obviously the benzene then can react with that particular carbon there. And that would give then rise to this sec, we call this sec butyl benzene. So quite an extensive look there of induction and how, and the effect that induction can have. Again, it's all about trying to stabilise charge. Um, and again, it involves sigma bonds. Okay, so we've looked at how it can affect acidity. We've looked at how it can affect um, major minor products in electrophilic additions and also major minor products here in electrophilic substitutions.